One of the things we're really trying to do is change the public's perception and then even within the field of education, our perception of what a teacher really is and what a teacher really does. There are a lot of similarities between uh, teachers and superheroes as far as giving to others, being in a service-oriented profession, trying to make other people's lives better. Our teachers are under immense pressure and immense scrutiny for doing what they do, yet we don't have any hesitation to send our most valuable possessions to them every day, our kids. So I think it's, it's valuable for us to be able to say, if we're going to truly value our teachers, let's start thinking of them like, like heroes. You know, research talks about how the teacher is the number one factor in student achievement. And over a decade of research continues to point to that teacher in the classroom. One of the things that we like to share in our workshops is that if you picture a classroom, fill it with everything that money can buy, right? And then put a mediocre teacher in front of that classroom. What are the results that you're going to get? Take a classroom, empty it out. Children, students, paper, and a pencil put an excellent teacher in front of that classroom, and what results will you get? The teacher makes all the difference, and we really want to point that fact out to our readers and, and to society as a whole, because they are that important. So it's one thing to take an instructional practice and walk through the series, a series of steps to go through the motions of implementing that instructional practice in your classroom. Um, whether it's effective or not for the students that I'm you know, working on and working with, that's another story. So when we engage in reflection, um, I'm, I'm building awareness around the needs in my classroom. And I'm aware that when I um, provide this type of instruction, Sally over here is, is getting it, but Martine, who's sitting next to her, is not and struggling. Um, when I have that awareness, I'm better able to be responsive to their specific needs and make that instructional practice fit the students that I'm working with. So back to that reflective cycle. I work with awareness. Um, when I'm aware, of the needs in my classroom that I'm better able to act intentionally. So if I'm not thinking first before I give my actions, my actions will fall short somewhere along the line. So I have to engage in that reflection before and during and after um, all of those instructional practices. Yeah, and it seems like common yes. sense that the more we think, the better we'd be at anything, whether it's instruction or driving a car or barbecuing. Uh, and it, this, all, this idea stemmed from the research that we did for our mm -hmm. first book, Building Teachers' Capacity for Success, that covered a century's worth of, of uh, literature on thought. It goes back to John Dewey's work from a century ago where he's talking about uh, the way that we think and our patterns of thinking. And they really do affect our performance. And, and in a nutshell, you could say that teachers that are more reflective are more effective in the classroom.